Good morning to you, children of you. A very good morning to you, children of the Most High God. I would like to thank the Lord for affording us yet another opportunity to come before his throne of grace, to receive mercy, for it is him who causes us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And it, today, it is the day that the Lord has made, and we are supposed to rejoice in it, because there is never going to come a day like today. And my prayer always is that may the Lord open the eyes of our understanding so that we may learn to cooperate with what God is doing. God did not create us like animals that, that just uh, respond or react, but he created us to make intelligent decisions to cooperate with him. We can never also then cooperate with God fully if we do not have information of how God operates. So in his manual, which is the Bible, the Lord has laid out a plan and we know we are in a great controversy. And in this great controversy, we cannot go it by the eye test. We need to have information that will make us stand. Anything that will make us stand is because we have invested in getting knowledge of our journey. So today I have chosen a title uh, taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter one, verse seven. I just want a few words from that uh, verse. In fact, it's a, it's a very powerful story, but I'm not going to use it for the purposes of our devotion this morning. But I just want us to go to the words that tell me, take your journey, and that's the title of our devotion. Shall we pray? Our most gracious Father, we thank you once again for always allowing us to bow before the throne of grace. The confidence that we have is that you hear and you answer prayer. Therefore, we approach boldly, not because we are good, but because you are good and you are worthy of all honor and praise. And dear Father, may you touch the hearts of your children in amazing ways. May your word reach to every uh, person and meet them at their level of uh, grieving. We do, I would not know each individual, but you know us specifically and personally. And for that, Lord, I am grateful that it is not I, but Christ who will speak to your children. I thank you for all these and many other blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As I was uh, um, preparing the message for today, I just was thinking to say, you know what? Um, every one of us has a story. Your story is not my story. And one day your life is going to become a story and what is going to be said about your story for it is not the first mile that you are going to be judged by but is the last mile when day is done how ought we to live despite all that we are going through has the lord forgotten us has the lord forsaken us nay the lord is very careful he's caring he has never abandoned these children not once and remember, even when he journeyed with them in the desert, he was a God above them. And when he, Christ came in the body, in the flesh, he was God among them. And in our day, he says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you my spirit. And he is a God inside of us. Therefore, if he is God inside of us, he's working a work that we cannot even begin to appreciate because the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he brings everything in his trail. He is the comforter. He is the hidden wisdom of God. And in these closing hours, as we are struggling with pain, as we are witnessing sorrow all around us, and at times we are so limited as to how to, uh, to be there, for, for how to be relevant in our time, the Lord is inviting all of us that despite whatever you've gone through, the Lord has allowed you to go through for a purpose and his purposes are eternal and his power is flowing in the stream of his purposes for each and every one of us lives. And as we are witnessing all these things, I have about uh, three examples, three or four maybe examples that I would like us to draw strength from this morning. The first uh, story that I would like to bring to your attention is the story of Moses. Uh, have you ever thought how it was for Moses to be, to be, for God to announce his death? And then for Moses to be told, now bring Joshua to confirm that God was serious about this thing. And then God says to Moses, I want you to call Joshua. I'm going to anoint Joshua so that you hand over. And have you ever tried to 
to, to think what was going on in his mind. But Moses faithfully ends his journey that way. God takes him to the top of the mountain, gives him a panoramic view, a view that cas cascaded up the curtains of, uh, of, it, of time were opened right up to our time. And Moses saw and was satisfied that God was, was wise, was great, was gracious. And I am saying this morning, if you were to stop and consider the suffering, our suffering loved ones who are struggling just to breathe. Have you ever tried to breathe maybe in water? And if you, if, if you have failed to breathe in water, can you try to imagine what our loved ones who are struggling, especially with corona, are going through? Isn't it God's message that allows them to rest than to struggle? And I was saying, as I was searching for the message this morning, I said, Lord, I thank you that Adam and Eve did not eat the tree of life. For had they eaten of that tree, our loved ones would be wailing in pain wallowing in pain without without any any hope or any getting better people would be rotting once they 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 have cancer or whatever particular disease they would be wallowing in pain and there would be no relief but god brought death as a blessing in as much as it is painful for god created us to live eternally but because of sin of the great forces god allows in this great controversy, God has allowed the devil, but not that he is not able. We are going to, he has offered solutions in so many different ways. That's why the word is ahead of us. No one is facing a situation or that is so original that the word is not spoken about. God says to his children, Whatever you are going through, I've prepared an escape route. I will be with you. So many times, God demonstrates throughout his word. He's a God who is demonstrating his faithfulness. For he cannot be unfaithful to himself. Once God promises, he makes sure that his word performs that which he ordained it to. And God is here uh, confirming to someone that you are not alone. Let us not make our losses about us because our losses are only coming as a schoolmaster. Whatever we go through, God has put it on a scale and has seen that we are able. He does not allow us to go through anything before he ordains us. He gives us power. That's why he is God inside of us. And you might not realize how strong you are, but you are stronger than you can ever think or imagine. Because God is working a work through you for his own glory. Whatever we are going through, let's not take it personally. This is a great war and the Lord is running the universe. He's not running small wars. So may the Lord help us. May he open the eyes of our understanding. May his hidden wisdom reveal unto each and every one of us. Our position is a position of victory. Why? Because he conquered the world. He says, oh power on earth and in heaven has been given unto me. So there is no power. We can never, never jeopardize his love for us. We can never increase it. Neither can we diminish it. Even by our misunderstanding of what we are going through, by the questions that we ask, by even at times uh, doubting who we are. He is a father who is ever interceding. Our, our Jesus is ever interceding. For on behalf of every saint, anyone who calls upon his name, no matter how weak you are, he is our strength. And therefore it is, I, I want to invite you this morning that whatever it is that you're going through, remember we have a God who is in control, who cares, and his spirit is hovering over. Remember in at, right at the beginning in creation, when the spirit of the Lord was hovering over life, spring forth and even in death you know when when someone is going through a grieving situation your 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 spirit dies your heart is broken there is nothing that you 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 can look at that brings happiness but the lord says once he, because his spirit is inside of us he revives a broken soul he mends he heals he restores that's what god does and we can only be restored and repaired by cooperation. I, I quite appreciate that some are in it at the moment. Some have received bad news even as we speak. But my prayer is that may you not focus on you. May you focus on him who has promised to take care of you. On him who has promised to take to mend hearts. David says to his son in 1 Kings chapter 2, uh, verses 1 and 2, if you read the whole narration there, 
David says, I'm going the way of the whole world, which means no one is exempt. But if we focus so much on our losses, we miss what God is doing for. He comforts us so that we can go into ministry. And when we are comforted, we are also supposed to be a conduit of salvation by comforting those who have gone through or who are going through. It doesn't matter. You when you, you are just maybe three weeks old into your grief. There is someone who is going in there this very hour who needs the strength of uh, surviving three weeks. Because it's a single day at a time. As we strengthen each other, we are not strengthening each other with experience of years. But the fact that you are a survivor of a single week means that you, you have survived. Many people are not, cannot, at the time they fail to survive grief because it's so devastating. That's why the Lord says, when you go through the water, I'll be with you. When you go through the fire, I will be with you. He is right there with us. And that's the message we need to send across to a perishing world that is perishing without hope, that we have a God who is an ever-present God, who is mending hearts, who is holding hearts together only by believing in him. He has not abandoned us, friends. He has not abandoned sheep. He's still the captain of this ship and what we are going. And he will wipe away every tear like he promised. And not even a little tear will dim the eye. No tiny grave will be found there. Death will never be mentioned. Why? Because God will have put everything to its original place. And as we look at the, the, these examples, all these examples, even Jesus himself went through it. He went through it. He said, and Hebrews tells us that he went through everything that we are going to go through so that he becomes the champion of our, our faith. So Christ is the champion in this suffering. He suffered. He lost his father before he, he died. He had lost his father. Remember at the cross, he says to John, uh, look after your mother. Look after your mother. Why? Because his heart was broken in a human way, broken for his earthly mother. And he commissioned someone to look after him. And he, she was already a widow. And I'm telling you this morning, my dear friends, that God is so careful. He will send human beings. He will send angels as in, in the form of, he will send divine helpers in our journey. People who walk with us, who strengthen us, people who pray for us, people who send words of encouragement, comrades that we will walk together, we will hold hands together and journey. As I speak, I the Lord has opened a door to minister to so many uh, young widows, especially. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm so amazed at what God can do. Some of them uh, have... Um, I've already started sharing. They're only a month old. And I've said to them, you know what? You will only heal at a deeper level when you minister, when you serve. If you are going to sit and have pity parties, not that they are parties, excuse me for my choice of words, but at times we, we forget that this world has an owner and who ordains things, who says, be still and know that I'm God, who says, I'm the Lord God of all flesh, there's nothing that is too hard for me. He is the same God who is inviting us that even with our pain, we can minister to the next person so that we give them hope so that they do not perish without hope. That's why Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul says that he, he, he invites us to grieve with hope. Because if we grieve without hope, you will not only lose your, your, your health, you will lose your, your peace, you might even lose your salvation. And many, because there's so much focus, they have an inward focus on, the, on issues of grief, they even end up losing friends. You lose even the people that are supposed to help you because you, grief can turn into something ugly. Emotions are never intelligent. And as you are grieving, you might even turn in, you know, become something that is uh, unbearable. And I'm inviting you uh, this morning to look at Christ, not to focus so much on you and to thank God that he gave uh, your loved one an opportunity to meet and to end their life well. I say this from experience. In 2013, I, I mentioned earlier on when I shared in the first uh, devotion. In 2013, in February, everything was perfect. I did not even think of death. Death was very far removed from me. And 
in April, in March, we, we came to South Africa. We went to South Africa for a second opinion. My husband was complaining, stomach uh, problems. I thought it was maybe acids or something. And then when the doctor came out of that examination room, the story of my life changed immediately. My husband was told, you only have four weeks to live, six at most. And tell you what, friends, those four weeks were the horror of my life. That was xenophobia, tsunami, and tornado put together. Something that I would never envisioned. Something that just came onto my plate without warning. And there we were in the middle, in the thick of things. And I am struggling now to even comprehend. Now, how did we reach to stage four? Where did stage one, two, and three happen? How, how come, Lord, why have you picked this battle for me? Please take this one away. I negotiated, I fasted, I prayed, I did all things. I called brethren to prayer. I sent his name wherever prayer, there was a prayer bed. People came and did Esther fast, Daniel fast, all kinds of fast, but the Lord still said no. And then I didn't understand what the Lord was doing. And my faith took a serious deep knock, as if that was not enough. I went on to lose my father. I lost my brother. In, in an instant, my brother died last year. He was just hit by lightning. It was not even rainy season yet. He was struck by lightning and just died instantly. My other brother was uh, involved in a car accident. You know, all those people, it was one thing after another as if things were on cue. But tell you what, the Lord has strengthened me, has given me an appetite. I'm sold out. Why? Because I'm saying this, this is war and I've chosen my side and I'm not going to continue losing. I'm not going to lose my faith. I'm not going to lose my position in glory. Why? Because I've already suffered and lost in this world. And I'm saying to someone, you have already suffered. Why not pick up the pieces of your life and journey on with the Lord? For he has a word and a message for you that you need to go out there. God does not send uh, untrained soldiers into war. Where we are going, where we are coming from is training. Your, your calamity is your training ground. And where you are supposed to go and minister is war. And the war has to be won. It's already, actually, the war we are on, we're fighting from a position of victory. God has already assured us that if we go, we are never going there alone. He is going to go with us because Christ went through it and conquered. He, we are also going to go through and conquer. And dear friends, I want to encourage you. When Jesus says, weep not, just stopping to weep and listening to his voice is an act of faith. And I'm inviting you to exercise your faith, to know that you can do this. You can continue walking. You can continue believing. I've shared time and time again that I've seen his end of mercy move. I don't know how I'm here. It's eight years later. I don't know how he has sent my kids to school. My youngest was what? She was doing grade three. She was only eight years. She's now 16 years. I don't know how the Lord has fed me with no formal job. Here I am. I don't know. God has, has used my my pain to minister. I'm relevant to, uh, uh, to, to widows and to people who have lost. Why? Because of the loss that I went through. I am relevant to someone who lost a brother. Why? Because I know the pain of losing a sibling. I know the pain of losing a father. My father died 2019. I know the pain of losing a sister. I know the pain of losing a mother. And I know the pain of losing a husband and journeying alone in this cruel world where people will judge you without even information of what you're going through. And dear, dear, dear sisters and brothers, the Lord has been faithful. And if he has been faithful in my life, I can guarantee you he's going to demonstrate his love for you. He is already doing a thing that you cannot begin. He says, behold, in Isaiah 43, is it 18 and 19? Behold, I'm making a new thing. You might not perceive it yet, but here, here is my commitment. I'm willing to make even a way in the desert. I'm willing to bring water from unlikely ground. That's what the Lord is willing to do with your life. Now, what you need to do is as you weep, continue marching. Weep and march. Take your pain as a regular sleeper. Walk as and acknowledge your pain and continue walking. Continue marching 
Because if you stop marching, it, a grief is not a place to stay. You'll be destroyed by the devil. Grief is hell. If you stay there, you will burn. You need to move. And as you move, you'll be surprised. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. As we continue moving, we have a nearing, and we're moving away from our pain. Our solutions are just by the corner, and the Lord is coming. May the Lord bless you as you, as you look at your pain. Look at it as, and say, Lord, what is, where is my mission with all this train, with all this pain? Only you can make sense to someone who's going through what you've gone through. And may you use your pain, may you use your experience to as a magnet, as a conduit for salvation. We don't have time. There's no more time. And people, the devil is using pain to destroy people because once you have pain, you remove your focus from him who is coming and concentrate on you. Stop concentrating on yourself. The only way to actually fail is to focus on what you've gone through. Yes, you have lost, I acknowledge that. Yes, you have, it's painful, I acknowledge that. Yes, it's unbearable and seemingly undoable. Yes, I acknowledge that, but look at me. If you can draw strength from this woman, I've been there, I'm still there and I don't know what's coming next, but I will still hold on to. He has tried, the devil will continue bringing wars, but I tell you what, he has conquered them all. And we, our only position of victory is trusting in him who is, whose word is faithful and whose word is steadfast. And uh, as we go through, let us know that we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. That's my message for you this morning, that as you look at all this, remember you are not going in there alone. He says, I will be with you in the fire. I'll be with you in the water. As the waters of your tears flow, the Lord says they are not going to sweep you. As the emotions in your heart are like fire and they threaten and they threaten you, they threaten you. The Lord is saying, I will not let you be destroyed. So let us hold on, let us trust him and let us keep trusting. I want to pray with someone who is broken hearted this morning and who is saying, Lord, if only, if only I could understand this. You might never get an answer or oh, hold you. And one day sing a song where you look at your scars and acknowledge that the Lord, only the Lord has kept us. Otherwise, the devil would have swallowed us alive. I will pray. My Father and my God, I thank you this morning for giving us yet another opportunity to bring our pain, our hearts, our bleeding hearts before you. We do not even know where to hold, oh Lord, because of pain. But you have given us a sure word that our only safety is in you, oh Lord. As we come this morning, as we crawl to, to, the, to that safety where you say your name is a strong tower, the righteous who run to it are safe. And dear Lord, I'm praying that you may touch the hearts of your children wherever they are, whatever they are going through. And dear Lord, you are so caring that you will not allow pain to destroy us. Only if we believe in your word. And dear Lord, may you increase our faith so that we may continue holding on onto you, Lord, even in this very trying time. I'm praying for families that are grieving right now, families that have tears running down their cheeks that you you. Your tears are a language that you understand. And David says, you have actually stored my tears in a bottle. And may they know, dear Lord, that no tear will go unnoticed with you. And as you are mending our hearts, may we stand up one day as a great army. And may we stand knowing that there is a day that our testimonies will be our song in glory. As we tell of the journey here on earth, what we went through. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us to go through this pain. For without it, we would not know that you are a healer. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to go through hunger at some point. For if you had not gone through that hunger with us, we would have perished and would not have known that you are a, the Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord, for, for mending hearts. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've ordained for our lives. I'm praising you this moment. For someone who's going to be strengthened by your word, may you strengthen your children. May you comfort them. If I've said anything that might cause pain, Lord, may you erase it from their memory. But may everything that glorifies you be 
they are much, they are fewer for the next step. May it give them strength knowing that they are not the only ones, they are not the first ones, neither are they the last ones. Therefore, they need to also look behind and serve so that they get strength to continue going on. Dear Lord, I thank you, I honor you, I praise you for this privilege. I ask all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.